Good evening, good evening, guys. Is my voice is clear and my uh, screen is visible? We can uh, get in the class. Good evening, guys. Good evening, Sheena. Anyone? Good evening. Okay, we wait for two minutes and uh, I will uh, get into the class. Okay. So, is my voice is clear and uh, the screen is visible? Anyone in the chat box? Okay. Supriya, good evening. Tamari, good evening. Okay, Saravana, clear, sir. Okay. Okay, Tarun, good evening. Okay, guys. Okay. So, in a previous session, we have saw about uh, introduction to ARM and what is embedded systems, and we saw lots of things. So, we saw how to configure the bits particularly and how to clear the bits. We all things we have seen. So, we are getting today, we are getting into the main concept. Okay. Wait a second. Okay. Okay. Yesterday's class, we have saw how to develop the KLE, how to set up the KLE. So today we are going to get into the system block configurations, and we are going to see the RCC registers, and uh, we are going to get into the GPIO registers, and we are going to develop a code for system block configuration. Okay, guys. Okay. So. We will get into the class. Okay. So, first thing, what is system block? When we take STM32, we are that we can do lots of options. We have lots of features in there. So, we can use a specified frequency for specified functions. If I want to run the UART in specified frequency, means I can use that, use it, configure that as per my specification. So, that is the advantage in STM32. So, we have lots of clock configurations. Okay. So, so this is how the, the clock configuration is inside a microcontroller. So this is the input fre frequency which is which represents the, the main crystal, which is 8, 8 megahertz. So it is here represented as 25 megahertz. We can change it. Okay. So it is available in KLAD. Wait a second, I will show the KLAD. So for clock configuration, we are going to use this STM cube MX. It is developed by uh, STM manufacturers. So access the MCU selector. Click this MCU selector. Wait for the files. Okay. So you search here for uh, what is the controller you are using? SM Z2 of four zero seven. So okay. so this is the uh, board we are going to use. We are using this uh, software only for knowing the what is the frequency we can set. Okay. So we have a clock configuration. Go to the system core. This is the system core. We have to. Go to the RCC. Sorry, we have to go to the RCC and you have to enable the external clock. Okay. Okay, I will uh, provide the links in the groups. No problems after this uh, session is over. Okay. So we have to we have to select the external crystal. That is what this is. So we have selected the crystal, and now we will get into the con clock configuration. Okay. So this is how the microcontroller clock setup will be. So we have an. Uh, 8 megahertz crystal. So we will have an internal clock. This HSC is a HSI is an internal clock and HSC is an main crystal. So we are going to do a we are going to use PL. What is PL? Anyone? What is PL? Okay. So PL is base clock. What is the purpose of that using the function that uh, that function in the controllers? So 
when it comes to the controllers we have to provide a minimum frequency in the main crystal so if i want to run the coin flow controller at the maximum frequency of 42 megahertz consider uh, system clock as an as runs at the maximum frequency of 168 megahertz so consider if i want to run the controller in the 168 megahertz then what is the what is this thing i want to do we should not connect the external crystal 168 mega value of 168 megahertz directly big why because as it is a face law ashwin kumar as you are correct so so why because we should provide a minimum frequency because if we provide a maximum of a main crystal frequency means the frequency will increase as per the noise increases so how much the, if you increases the frequency then the noises of the frequency also increases so to reduce that to overcome that problem only they have invented they have find the phase lock loop so what is the phase lock loop is going to do is see we are not going to use the internal clock if you want you can use today we are going to see how to configure the pl okay phase lock loop so what is going to do is the phase lock the pl phase lock loop is going to do is it is going to multiply the 8 megahertz into 168 megahertz of frequency by doing this the noise can be reduced okay so the noise is of reduced and we can get a clear frequency so for this purpose only they have get it into a pll concept so what is a pll is doing so when you take arm 7 the arm 7 which is a based on arm 7 it is a another type of controller it is also have a pll in that in that controller we have only multiplier and divider value so we in this when we come with stm32 f4 arm 7 m4 it gives it gives us a manufacturing gives us a lots of features for configure system clock why they are given what is the use of it if you consider we want to open the because if you are, if consider the scenario you take a scenario of car accident okay so at the time of car accident the airbag has to be released in nanoseconds of it has to respond in my nanoseconds so for that purpose what they do is they will have some configure some specified frequency to attain that fast so for that purpose only they are implemented the pll in this and stm is in a, as per why it is used in industrial means because of this is a one of the reason because we can configure whatever we need we can use whatever megahertz we are need okay so that is the reason by using the altering the frequency we can do anything by using a, by a, for example it is a accident car airbag system how the airbag system works it is a it has to be respond quite quickly so that is the reason that is the reason for we are using pl so this is a uh, how the microcontroller pl clocks will be circuit so we have to so you can uh, download this cube mx uh, for knowing the clock configurations so it will give us a value and uh, you can uh, directly import this value into a microcontroller by using the registers that i will come in next session uh, next slide so now we will see what are the process going on so when we uh, we should enable the first what is the step for procedures so first we have to enable the main system what we have done already here so it will be like uh, it is like library when you come with the uh, when we develop the code in kyl id we will uh, enable the hsc external with crystal by using the registers okay this is just for figuring out what are the m value and p values are used and what are the what are the abb bus or abb peripheral clocks are where connected it is for that purpose we are seeing this okay so we have to first so we have to first enable the hs so it is a main crystal then it gets into a pl phase lock loop what is the pl is going to do is going to multiply and divide the input frequency into a to get a desired frequency okay that is what pl is going to do so now if consider i want to get a um, maximum frequency of 160 megahertz okay so we can use this uh, we can use this in any way any of the function we can use three functions here so we can power the these peripherals what are these what are these abb1 what is this abb2 represents so and what is a p clock and uh, what is a b1 prescaler and we are all going to see in the coming slides okay ah uh, yes uh, no problem bharat uh, it will be when you get used to it it will be very much uh, it will be clear okay so because i am giving you a you are theoretical thing 
when we get into the coding part it will be very much clear for you okay so so what is the reason for configuring this so we have to give some frequency to abb1 and abb2 what is the use of the abb1 and abb2 for that we have to go to the block diagram as i shown as okay so see you can see here right so here you can see it ahb1 it is a one of the bus and we here we have a abb1 and we abb2 is here so these three are the buses so these are connected to the sum of the futures so ahb hb1 is connected with the gpio vinayak uh, sir come in okay so abb1 is connected with the gpio ports and uh, abb2 bus abb1 bus is connected with the can bus i2c communication reward communication timers and time all the timers and when it comes with the abb2 means it is connected with adc uod spis and pwm and sdiu so this is the reason why we have to configure the system for because the frequency is given to the some of the peripherals like uod i2c and all the things so if i want a particular of a communication like a, as as a previous example like a car so i can fix the frequency and i can do the frequency attain the frequency which i am needed at the which frequency the uh, response is very much quicker i can find that and i can configure as per the frequency so i can decide what is the frequency the you want to store what is the frequency at what is the frequency rate as the sp want to work like that we can do for that purpose only we will get into Okay. So, for the purpose only, we are using this thing. So that is the reason. Now you know what is the purpose of ABB one, and if you guys understand what is the use of ABB one and ABB two. So this ABB one timer clock means it is connected to the directly to the timer function, and the rest of the functions you are trying to see all is connected with the ABB one peripheral clock. So for timer, we can give a specified timer. We can We can give a frequency separately for timer and separately for U watts and other communications. Okay, so so now we will see how it works. So the HSC clock will be first. First step we have to tune on the HSC clock. So which is a main crystal. Then I want to get a. We can say I need I need a sixteen megahertz of frequency. Okay, so I am going to use a. System clock as well, sixteen megahertz. So when I change this to BLR, I will give this as a. So we are using the edge clock, which is a, which is connected to the GPIOs. So we are going to use the system clock as sixty-four megahertz, and the, it is divided by prescaler, and it is going to give us sixteen megahertz. Okay. So if I want to do, uh, if I want to use the system clock, what is system clock? The core clock. Now the microcontroller runs on the this core clock only based on this core clock only. Okay, so it is going to be sixteen megahertz, sixty-four megahertz. If I want sixty-four megahertz, means I have to set the M value as four and N value as sixty-four and P and Q is not needed now because it has come to an another type of when we come to next stage we will see that. Okay, so we have to give this three values in the registers. When we set these values, means the PLR will attain that desired frequency, which is. Sixty-four megahertz. Okay. Okay. Chaitra S S. Okay, I will make it slower. Okay. So this PL will the we will get a desired frequency of sixty-four megahertz. Okay. Then what we have to do? Now we have set up the frequency for the system, the core clock. Okay, CPU clock. Now I have to configure the peripheral ABB clocks and ABB two clock. So I am going to use the Peripherals, you uh, want SPI communication at the. I I need to use the, you want SPI communication at the 16 megahertz of frequency. Okay, so uh, it is a cube uh, cube ID will be available in the website uh, Google. So you can search means you can download the latest version. Okay, okay. So where I left? Okay. Now we have desired we have attained the desired frequency of system clock. What is the frequency we need? By giving this four values in the PLR phase clock, we will get into when we get into the registers. I will say how to give this value into the registers in bitwise. Okay. So we now we have attained the first step. We have we have clear. 
we have this we have attained another system block as in 64 megahertz then now i am going to configure the abb1 and abb2 so consider the both are same process so i am going to configure the abb1 so the h clock is 16 megahertz so if i need i am going to i wanted to use the i2c in i2c in 18 megahertz of frequency so what is the value i have to give to the p scalar abb1 p scalar it is divided by 1 if i divide it by 1 means i will get the same frequency here so i can configure the so i can configure the i u what as an at the 18 megahertz of frequency okay so by by doing this our noises are reduced and we will not get errors and we will can do lots of things in a minute delays and minute response okay for this reason only they are they have given these lots of functions system configuration blocks in the control okay so is this this understand if uh, anyone anyone any part of this is can't understand you can uh, give a message okay in chat box Okay. Okay, I will uh, provide uh, links for the in uh, WhatsApp group. No problem, guys. After this end of the session, okay. Okay. Now you will get into the slide. Now we will see how the phase clock group is working. So the input frequency must be within that ten to 25 megahertz okay and then what is going <coughs> what is it is going to do it is going to if the clock is going to multiply with a suitable multiplayer and scale accordingly so we, it is going to do the function to get the desired frequency so what is the maximum frequency we can do with m4 it is 168 megahertz okay so this is how the diagram will be so it will be like it will the uh, main crystal will get into the pre uh, phase dog loop and it will uh, after giving a multiplayer and divider's value it will give the frequency to the CPU clock, and by while giving this clock to the CPU, it is getting a uh, getting into a VBB divider, which is a VSLI peripheral divider. So all the peripherals like U U R I two C, SPI timers are all connected under the P clock only. So we can separately configure the P clock frequency and CPU frequency separately. So to, uh, what are the reasons? Because we can attain the best efficient output for that reasons. Okay, this is the so guys, so you can now convert this masterclass into an internship, one month internship on embedded systems. So guys, you are going in this internship. What you are going to get is you will get a detailed explanations and you are going to get a more knowledge. So we have in, a, in a, we have lots of course in pipeline. So lots of topics, new topics will be get into the internship without the masterclass. So guys, use this uh, internship as your opportunity. So the fees is thousand two hundred. So it is a uh, get discount for six ninety one. Use this, use this code to register. Okay. So what are the benefits? As I said uh, yesterday, uh, you, you will be able to have a thirty days of live session, nine days access to the videos, answer product answer practice on embedded projects, and thirty days downloadable presentation will be available. And you will have a uh, one to one six mentor live mastermind sessions. Okay. So you can interact with me directly. Okay, and we will have to provide you a confirmation letter for internship and the certification is provided at the final session of the after completing the internship. Okay. So guys, use this. So this is how you will this is the link for uh, registration the uh, internship. So guys, uh, when you come with the internship, it is going to be very detailed manner and you are going to see lots of new topics. You will you will see the detailed can communications and link communications and lot of things you will see. And uh, so guys use this internship for the use this internship for your opportunity as an opportunity and upskill yourself okay so now we will this is the architecture of pl so as i shown in your previous slide this is how the frequency are going to generate it. so we are we have to set three values so what is it is we have to say for to attain a cpu clock we have to do three values m n and p and when we if you want to attain if you want to specify frequency for 
Animal or peak clock means you have to give the frequency, you have to set some value in ABB1 prescaler, and when you use the peak clock 2 means you have to set the ABB2 prescaler. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we get into the now we get into the registers. Okay. So guys, I have already shared the referral manual for you. This is a referral manual for 405, 477 and 407. Okay. So first we will get into the uh -oh. We will see what are the RCC registers available. Okay, so this is for uh, another family. So we, here we have available RCC for zero cross zero seven double cross. Okay, so first is first is clock control register. Okay, what is this register is going to do? As I said, first step for system configuration, we have to tune on the main crystal. So, the bit is available in this register only. So, we have a 32 bit 0 to 31. So, as in previous uh, class, I have said how to uh, particularly set logic one in a particular bit and clear the particular bit. So, this is the reason why we have seen those things. Okay. So, So, in this uh, clock control register, RCC of control register, we have an uh, first uh, zero bit is HIS, HSI on, oscillator on, which is what is HSI? It is internal high speed clock. So, if you want to use the internal high speed clock also, you can use it. We will use the HSI on, we will use the crystal. Okay. So, the, what is the thing we have to do? It is set by and cleared by the software. So, we have to set logic one in the 16 bit. If I set logic one in the 16th bit means it is going to tune on the HSC, which is the main crystal. Okay. So where we have to set this? Where is the HSC on is 16 bit? So you can give one left shift of 16 means it's going to set the logic one in the 16th bit. Okay. So we can we have now tuned on the we are now tuned on the HSC main crystal. And we have to check whether the HSC is tuned on or not. So you have a 17 bit that's one flag. What is flag means? If the hardware it is it is set by the hardware to indicate that the HSC oscillator is tail. So HSC oscillator is working, it is like a flag. So after tuning out, we have to check the condition. Okay. So we have to check the flag. If the flag is created, if it is uh, set by the hardware means it will get into the next step in the loop. Okay. So these are the two steps first we have to do for system configuration. So we have tuned on the crystal and we are checked whether the crystal is tuned on or not okay then now we, we are going to use a pl so we are not going to use the hsc as a main source so we are going to use a pl as a main source so we have to tune on the pl right so we are going to tune on the pl by setting logic one in the 24th bit so when you come with 24th bit you can see the pl one and you will have an a 25th 25th bit as an a clock ready flag bit okay so if we can check it by using uh, by setting the logic one in 25th bit, 25th bit we can check whether the PLL is locked or not okay PLL is working or not okay so this is the first issue we have to know these are comes uh, PL to SNR comes under the sound configuration if you want to as I said in the previous session we can uh, do an uh, audio processing and lots of things for the proper for the purpose we will use this PLS, okay. These PLS, okay. Then we will come to. Then what we have to do? We have to give the some value to the PL to get the desired frequency. So when you come with the PLL configuration register, you can see the PLL Q value, and we have a main clock. We have to select the HSC oscillator clock selector as an PL. So we have tuned on the HSC. We have to say controller that use the HSC as an HSC source as an for the PLL. So the, then the PLL HSC source will be separate to the PLL function. Okay. So this is 24, 20, 22nd bit. You can uh, see here you have to set logic one in the 22nd bit. Okay. Oh, guys. Okay. Is it clear? Silage. Zoom in. Okay.
then we have an then we have an pl pl p value so we have to we have only four values 2 4 6 and 8 so we have to set what what is the value we need okay this is how we will set what is the bit it is it is, it is it is in the 70 then 16 bit. If you consider if I want to set the 4 divided by 4 means I have to set logic 0 in the 17 bit and logic 1 in the 16 bit. Okay. So Vishwa, Vishwa please repeat the data sheet. Uh, guys, uh, if uh, after what is the thing you can't understand? You specifically you mentioned it means I can't uh, explain that uh, register. No problem in it. Okay. Okay, now we will see the registers. Okay, so we have an PLL value, we have to set it in the 16th and 17th. Okay, when we come with an PLLN means it is a multiplication factor. So we have it is a, it is allocated bit is from 16 to 14. So we have of nine total of nine bits. We have total of nine bits. It is it can be till 500. Okay, so if I want to set the one, if I want to set to 168 means. I have to convert the 168 into hexadecimal format and I have to give it to the PLN to configure the PLN. Okay. And we finally we have to set the M value. Okay. So as per the value in the cube ID cube MNs, we can set these values. Okay. So now it is the allocated bit is 0 to 5. So you can see the Q has an uh, four bits, and for uh, selecting the HSC as an uh, HSC as an uh, PLL source, we have an uh, 22nd bit, and for uh, PLP we have an uh, two bit, and for uh, nine bits we have an uh, n value, and we have an uh, six bits of m value. So we are going to set the values in these bits only to attain the desired frequency. Okay. So next register is CFG. Okay. Now this is a RCC clock configuration register. So here what we have to do is we are what we are going to do is we are going to set the value for ABB1 and so we are going to set the value for prescale P clock, which is ABB1 and ABB2. And we are going to also set for the AHB. So, so 0 and 0 and first bit is used for selecting the clock source as a system clock. If I want to use an internal clock means it is in a reset value, we have to do. We don't need to give anything. When you have to use HSC means you have to mention the 0 1. 0 1 means you have to set logic 1 in the 0 the bit. So then it will use the HSC as an system clock. It will select the HSC main crystal as an system clock. But what we are going to do here, we are going to do is I am going to use a PLL as a system clock. So what is the thing we have to do? Anyone in this class? What is the thing we are going to do? What I have to set in these two bits? So wrong. So sir, simply what is PL? So PL is nothing. It is going to multi. It is going to increase or decrease the value of frequency you are going to give in from the main crystal to the microcontroller. So we are what? Why we are using is because we are going to for reducing the noise. Okay. For that reason only we are using going with the PL. Okay. Okay, I already shared this uh, data sheet for the WhatsApp group. In WhatsApp group, guys, so you can uh, open those uh, data sheets, no issues. So, can I, I will get into the registers. So, if I want to select the PLL as a system clock, means I have to set logic one in the first bit. Okay. Then I have to check whether it is set or not. So, it is used as a system clock or not. So, I am going to check the PLL is used as a system clock or not. What I have to do? I have to set, I have to check with logic one in the third bit. So if the third bit is it is certain given by the order. Okay. So if the third bit is logic one means the PLL is used as a system. Okay. Then we will come with the AHP prescale. What is the function of this AHP prescale? So this is a AHP, this is a prescale which is going to give the, uh, which is going to give a desired frequency for the system clock. Okay. So we have the value still, we have four bits of values till 512. So what are the value we needed? We have to set it in the AHB prescale. Okay. So what does AHB prescale are right actually? 
So this is a HP prescale. So what is the value I need is four. So I will set the four value in those bits. And now we will then we will see the ABB prescale, which is a giving the frequency to P clock one, and we will see the ABB two prescale, which is giving the frequency to P clock two. Okay. So the allocator bit for this AB HB prescale is four to seven. So this is just for uh, selecting and uh, seeing uh, checking a flag. <coughs> And first is for AHP prescale, which is uh, which has on a four bit, four to seven. So if I want to set to consider, I have to set. I have to set sixty four divided clock system clock divided by sixty four. So what I have to do? I have to set logic. If the value is one one double zero. So I have to set logic one in the seventh and sixth bit and the fifth and fourth bit. We will let as zero logic zero. So reset value will be zero. So just you have to set logic one in the sixth and seventh bit. Then the value will be by one sixty. It will be like the what is the value represents. Okay. Then we will come to the AHP one, ABB one, low speed prescale. So this is the prescale used to set the value for the P clock one. So by giving this we can with as an three dedicated bits. And for a ABB two also, it is an high speed high speed prescaler. It also have an three bits. So by giving this value, we can set the we can get the desired frequency what we are needed. Okay. So I now I will show the bits. So so you can see the three bits are available for ABB one, and three bits are available for ABB two. So we have set up the what are the things we have done here? We have selected the HSC. We have tuned on the HSC, and we have given the M and P and three these three values, and we have selected the PLL as a source for system clock, and the, we have divided the clock by four. HP HP prescale value is four. So we would have set up the four. So we will get a sixteen megahertz of frequency, and when it comes with the uh, P one and P clock two. It will be able to. We don't need to do anything because when it comes with one means, it has no value. You don't need to. So the HP clock is not divided. So you don't have to set these values there. So no need required for it. If you want a specified frequency means, you can set the value by using this by giving the logic one to the those bits what is required. Okay. So we have settled this, and we have attained the peak clock of frequency as 16 megahertz, and time clock frequency also as an 16 megahertz. Okay. So this is what prescaler is. This is the reason why we are using the prescaler. So we can get the desired frequency. Okay. So guys, this is uh, understand, and we will get into our next uh, registers. You will see what is the AHP register. What are the functions present in the AHP one register and the APP two registers? Is this uh, concept is clear? Okay. Okay, we will get into a AHB one register. So we have a lots of register. We have a reset register. We have a low power mode register. We will see the clock enable registers. Okay. So peripheral clock enable low power mode. It is in the low power. So here. Yeah. Which is a peripheral clock enabled register. So as I said, STM is designed in the low power consumption and efficiently. So we have lots of register. We have a reset register. We can configure the U board and all the pins in low power mode. So to to give an efficient output and to reduce the consumption of power. So we will see that. So what is the present in the HB one is same as HB two low power register. So you can wait. So this is a HP one prescale. So what are the things we have have in this prescale? So all the registers will have a zero to thirty two bit. Okay, zero to thirty one bits. Total of thirty two bits are available in the all the registers. So what are the things present in this register? So when you come with So this is the reason we have to see the block diagram. Okay, so you can see 
the AHB1 buses connected to the GPIOs, DMAs, USBs, and Ethernets like this functions. When you come with the a, ABB1 means it has an timer function, I2C, CAN, DAC, all these functions. Likewise for ABB2. Okay. So, so we have to configure if I want to use the GPIO pin port DA because we have an we have a port of nine ports till n. So if I want to enable, I have to use the GPIO A means I have to give the I have to set the clock to the we have to give the clock enable the clock so clock source to the GPIO port DA. So before that we will see what are the things present in this solution. Okay, we have a USB OTG clock enable, high speed OTG enable, and we have an Ethernet reception and Ethernet transmission clock enable, Ethernet MAC ID enable. DMA means direct memory access enable clock enable. So these are the things we will see on the coming slides. So first we will see uh, what is the GPIO, what is the clock we are giving to the GPIO registers. Okay. So consider I have to tune on the clock for to, we have to I have I'm going to configure the GPIO pin 2 in the GPIO port A. So I have to give the frequency to the clock first, frequency to the port first. So I have to enable the clock. So by giving the logic, by setting the logic one in the zero of the bit, it will enable the clock source. Okay. So it is going to enable the clock, clock for the GPIO port A. So without doing this, we can't configure the GPIO port A because it will not work. So uh, microcontroller works as per the frequency. So we have to give the frequency to the GPIO. Then I would have enabled the GPIO A port by giving the logic one to the zero of the bit. How I am going to give it? I am going to simply do RCC register, RCC peripheral clock enable register. I am going to one left shift of zero the position. So the logic one will be get set in this GPIO A. Okay. So we will come to the next register. Next is AHB2. So when you come with the HB2, we have an USB of OTG full speed and we have an ash modules and we have a cryptographic module clock enable for this and camera interface enable also here. So we all are going to see in the coming sessions. Now we will see what are the things present in these clocks. Okay. So next is we will see the HB3 registers. Okay. Now, HB3 is which has a flexible static memory control module clock enable. If you want to use this function, means you have to enable this clock. Okay. So, so, so I will come to the chat box. It's a GPO standard general purpose. Yes, sir. It is a standard thing. So if you want to use the pin as a GPIO means you don't need to do the uh, you don't need to give it a function you can use it directly. Okay. So well, RCC means it is a reset and clock control register. That is the full form for RCC. Okay. Okay. I will uh, explain it clearly. Don't worry. Jody, okay. Okay, now we will get into a next register, which is a ABB1 register, peripheral clock enabled register. So, what are the things present in this register? So, if I consider I have to use the timers, so we have a nine timers here, and we have a watchdog timer, and we have an SPI, DAC, PWR, and control CAN 1, 2, and we have an I2C and UART communications. So, if I want to enable the, if I want to use the UART communication, means I have to enable the you are communication first. So I have to enable the clock for the UART communication. So this is the DAC interface. If I want to use the DAC means we have to enable the clock. So in this register we have a DAC power interface clock. So and this this is very important thing because if we, uh, before enabling the we are getting into a system configuration we have to enable the power interface clock first because after that only we have to configure the system clock. This then we have to give the voltage scale, which is will be on a recent question, so we don't need to mention it. I will show it in the coming 
registers. Okay. So we have a CAN here, we have CAN 1 and 2, and we have I2Cs and you, you watch. So if you want to work with these uh, functions means you have to first of all you have to enable these clocks for this those functions. So that is the reason for this register. So this register is used for enabling the clock for these functions. And when you come with the ABB2, it has an ADC, SDIO, UART6, UART1 and time 11, 10, 9. These are the functions which is available in this, this register. Okay. So you will go into a fastly okay registers and when you as I said you as an a low power mode also so I can use all the things with an a low power mode and normal power mode so if I want to use a I want to minimize the power consumption means I will configure the GPIO pins with the low power mode registers which will be giving a consumption will be very much reduced same things will be present as per the EHB1 register register as per this, so both the registers will have an app. same functions, but it is for low power mode and those is for normal power mode. And we also have a reset register to reset the peripheral reset register. So we can reset, <coughs> excuse me, okay. We can reset whatever the peripherals we need. Okay. So we can reset all the things. We can reset the GPIOs. So for that, it is specifically given for the this is specifically given for resetting the register. Okay. So we are see, these are the registers. So this is how we are going to configure the system clock. So we are going to set to the logic ones and we are going to play with zeros and ones. So we are going to use lo lots of zeros and ones. Okay. So we have solved the registers, RCC registers. So what is the processor? So as I said, we have to first enable the clock interface, power clock interface. And we have to give the voltage regulator. Where is this register is present? We have to go to the data reference manual and uh, you can see power control in that. You will have an uh, registers. We have a standard register and power control register. So we have to use this. It will be in a default uh, reset at the scale one mode. If you want to use the scale two mode, which you can use it. But uh, most of the time, we will use the scale one mode. So it is available in the power register. Okay. So so second step is we have to enable the voltage regulator and we have to enable the crystal HSC. Which is the main crystal, and we are going to check whether the HSC is set or not. And we are going to give the values to the PLL multiplex and divider value, which is M, P, and N. And we are going to, after giving that value, we are going to enable the system clock to the. We are going to enable the system clock to uh, system clock as an PLL. So then we are going to check whether that is a desired frequency or not. After that process, only we are going to set the AHB value, ABB value, and ABB2 value prescribes. Okay. And finally, we are going to check whether the PLLS attains the desired frequency or not. Okay. So this is the steps to con steps to write for system clock configurations. Okay. So next. So is this system clock configuration is clear? If you any have doubts, means you can ask in chat box. So it is uh, time for chat box. Okay, I think the guys the uh, system clock configuration is clear. So if you are not clear also, it is no issues. So you try to little understand little bit when you come with an uh, programming when you develop the when you develop the code, you will uh, get to know it. Okay. Okay. 
ഗൗതമി ഓക്കെ ഗൗതമി ക്ലിയർ ഓക്കെ Okay, today also I will say the guys to share your uh, PPTs and uh, links for, uh, for these uh, softwares and IDs. Okay. So, Mohammed, sir, system clock for working in CPU. What is the question? okay so i think it is clear we will next we will get into the gpio setup so now we are going to see the gpio registers okay so we have set up the system clock configuration we have enabled the clocks even when you not configure the system clock the microcontroller will defaultly give some random frequency which is generated automatically by the microcontroller okay so it is no need for system clock if you are uh, using a gpio if you want to use just a gpio mix it is no need of a system clock but you need a specific uh, frequency and specific baud rate means while uh, we are generating baud rate for you at all we need a specific frequency for that purpose only we are giving into a system okay so so we will get into the registers so what are the things we have to do we have to enable the clock for gpio as i shown in this uh, previous register it is in the how we will enable the clock it is present in the rcc register which is ahb1 so ahb1 as an ahb1 bus is connected to the gpio ports so we have to enable the gpio port first and we have to give the select the pin what's the pin we are going to use and we are going to select the functions and we are going to set or reset the pin okay now we will see the registers you get into the rcc registers okay so so guys the data sheet is very much important uh, you have to it will be download and keep the data sheets so so it will be very much useful for your reference because you are going to configure lots of things so you have to see the pdf for what are the bits where are the functions present so download this download this referred manual and use this okay so when you come with the general purpose input gpio go to the registers and you now see the registers okay so first thing is we have to select the mode okay what is mode we have to say whether the what kind of purpose we are going to use the thing we are going to simply use a blinking led or we are going to read the analog values or we are going to use an uart or spa as the configuration so we have to say the controller what is the mode we are going to use so we have a four modes so see here so we have a 0 to 31 bits which is a sum of 32 bits so each pin consists of a two bit so in every in all the ports we have a 0 to 15 pins in all the ports in all the a to h ports we will have a 15 pins default from 0 to 15 so each pin will have a each, each pin represents a two bit so we have to set the value what is the function if i want it is in a if i want to use as an input means i don't want to do that any value i don't want to set any of the value that so i can leave it as it is because i am going to get a input it is in a reset value so no problem so if i consider i want to i want to do an a blinking led project means i have to configure it as an a general purpose output mode so this will do so it is it will select the pin as an a output mode then you if you want to use as an spi you or can or some other function means you have to give the alternate function and when you have to read the sum of the temperature value by using the sensor means temperature sensor means you have to give a analog which will take a analog input so these are the four functions so alternate functions i will show how to in coming slide i will show how to select the alternate functions so now consider i have to going to use the general purpose output mode so i am going to use uh, the second first pin okay first pin what is the thing i have to do anyone in the chat box guys so what is the thing you have to we have to set 0 and 1 in this two bits so we have to left shift the 1 into second position so it will be 0 and 1 and it the pin uh, pin 1 is in a port a so how you will represent a port a so by giving the gpio 
instead of x you have to give what support you are using a b c or d a b c or d and by you are uh, you know, x1 by mentioning here only we will say, we will say what support we are going to use and by using a mode or we are going to configure what is the function we are going to use so consider you are going to use the first pin okay we are going to use the first pin so i am as a general purpose output mode so i have to set logic one in the second bit. that means it will be like 0 and 1 now the pin is selected as a general purpose output mode okay so next is push pull and open rate okay push pull means it will be in a push pull and open rate means it will be in a logic zero okay so when it comes with an um, when you come with a motor register it will have an uh, each pin will represent uh, two bits when you come with an when you come with an output type register means each pin represents a uh, only one each pin represents uh, only one bit and the rest of the bits rest of the 16 bits is 15 bits are reserved okay so you can see here Rest of the 15 bits are reserved. You can't access these bits by in this register. Okay. So if I want to use an open drain output open drain function means in the first pin means I have to set logic on this in this pin. Okay. So next register is speed. So we are we are going to design the speed. What is the speed we have to transfer the data or plot bits? Okay. So in when we come with this output speed register as the same as model the each pin will represents a two bits okay so low, we have a low speed medium speed high speed and very high speed so if i consider i have to set high speed okay then in the first bit what is the thing so we have to set logic logic one in the both the three and second bit question so we can give one left shift of uh, one left shift of two and one left shift of three or you can give the sum of the values of this. What is the sum of the value of these two bits? If I want to set logic one and the third question and second question means, what is the sum of these values? Anyone in the chat box? So, if I want to set this, uh, Logic one these two bit means it's sum of the values. How it is divided? It is divided as one, two, and four. In. So we have don't have our four bit, we have only two bits. So it will be as an a one and two. So if I want to set logic one in these two uh, two bits means I have to go three to the I have to send the left shift of three to the second portion. Then it will set the one in this and and this. We will set logic one in these both the bits. Okay. So So then we will have a pull, pull up and pull down register. So this will say what is the initial stage the pin should, should be. It should be in a logic 0 or logic 1. It will say what is the initial stage. So we have a four functions with our one one is reserved. So here, here also like modal register, we have an each pin that corresponds to that two bits. Okay. So we have a push down, push up, and no push and no pull down. So, if you want to consider, if you are, I am going to use a no pull and no push, push down means I have to configure the first, first pin because I am going to use the first pin. So, I have to configure the second and third bit as an 0, 0. Okay. Or it is in a reset position, you can leave it. Okay. If you want to do it as in a push, push up or push down means you have to set the logic there. So, logic is 0, 1 means push up, 1, 0 means push down. Okay. So, next is input data register okay so what is this input data register is going to do so we are getting input right what is the input if i want to get the input in um, in the second first pin means i have to set i am going to read the value here. so by getting uh, when you are reading like uh, temperature values or i am getting like a switch i am connecting a switch button means it will give a logic one to the specified pin if i consider i am giving a connecting a switch to a uh, switch button push button to the first pin so this will read that those uh, it will be continuously reading if the logic one if i give the push button means the logic one will be given to the pin and then it will read and it will give some it will give the output to the micro it will give to the microcontroller and by getting by reading this we can do some operations like if i give a push button means tune on the lead by using the if condition so that is the that's the purpose of this input register okay 
then we have an output register so we can read and write here so we can read or write so when it comes to the output register we have an external we can have a bsr register so instead of using the output register we can use this register to set or reset the value if i want to tune on or we can do the both things in the same register itself we can set we can set we can tune on the led or tune off the led we can set or we can, we can reset now what is the key point here is see what is this is so we have only 15 pin in the all the ports as per the model register the model register will be in a aligned form when it comes with an psr it is not in the aligned form but the each pin will be represents a two bits so like that if you if i want to tune on the led means in the first pin means i have to set logic one in the bs1 bit so in the first question so i have to tune on the led now now then what how will be, i will be able to tune off the led so for that purpose i have to set logic one in the corresponding bit what is the corresponding bit it is 70 if i set logic one in bs1 means it is going to tune on the led when i set the logic two in the logic one in the 17th bit means br1 means it is going to tune of the LED. this is what the bsr is used by using this register we can tune on and tune off the leds okay and we will come to the alternate function so we have seen here the when you can select the alternate function mode if you consider you have selected the alternate function what is the function I am going to use? Alternate function, lots of alternate functions are there. I2C, CAN, UART, ADC, DAC, DCMI, like this, so lots of functions are there. How, how I am going to select the functions? Now we will see. So when you come with an, uh, you see, you go to the GPA function description and you have an uh, alternate function input output. So when you go, So, this is how we will set the alternate function. See, we have an, we have to select the, we have to, each pin will have an, 4 bit, corresponds to the 4 bit here. Not like mode or, which is, uh, each pin will correspond to the 2 bit, but when it comes to the alternate function, each bit is corresponds to the, each pin is corresponds to the 4 bits. So, you can see it. So we have to set the four bits for doing some function. If I consider I am going to use a A of seven means, I have to set logic one in the, I am going to use this, what is the pin I am connected with this? Pin of A, one. So first pin I have to set zero, one, one, one. And the function with the alternate function seven will be selected. What is this alternate function seven represents? For the purpose only, we have to see. Alternate function input outputs. Okay. So this is the alternate function which is represent to the AF values. So what is it I am going to do? I am going to select the AF7. What is the AF7 cor cor corresponds to? It is corresponds to it as an from UR1, UR1, UR2, UR3. And when it comes to the AFA, we have an user 428. Like that, we have a lots of functions for using can be an AF, AF of 9. When it comes to the OTG USB means, we have 10th function, we have Ethernet function, DCMA function, timer function, I2C functions. So, here is a key point. So, if I take the block diagram means, you can wait a second. Diagram. So you can see the all the pins will have a minimum of two to three functions, four functions. Okay, well. so if I consider I am going to use the this pin, I am going to use PA. Okay, I have to use this this pin. Okay, PA of two and PA of three. What I am going to use as I am going to use this as an serial UR communication. So I am going to use an U U sort two. Configure it as an user. So, when it comes with an, a serial communication, the BA as a BA2 and 3 as an, a user communication 2. If I consider I have to set the bit for 
I'm going to use the u sort 1 and 2 mean I'm going to use the there we have used the u sort 2. If consider I'm going to use the u sort of first function, u sort 1. Then where is the pin is present? It is in the PA of 10 and PA of 9. Okay. So remember this, you will get into that. Okay. So for first law, we have a two registers for almost selecting the ordinate functions. We have one is for where is this? Uh, so one is one is low power low register and another one is I register. Okay. Low register and we have an I register. Why it is divided? So we have only a word length of 32 bit, right? So each pin corresponds to the four bits. So for first seven pins, it is in the low low register, ordinary function low register. And for the last seven pins, it has it in the I register. Okay. So if I consider I have to con I have to configure both the things. I have to consider the U sort 2 and as the thing as U sort 1. I have to configure two things also. So what I do is go to the ordinary function. So U sort 1 is present in the which pin? It is present in the Present in the 10th pin and 9th pin. Okay. And user 2 is present in the PA of 3rd pin and 2nd pin. Okay. So, so if you want to do the first pin, if you want to configure the for first 7 pins, means we will give the A of 7 of ordinary function of 7. And when it comes to the last, uh, last 7 pins, means it is comes to an I register, which is a we have to select the here also we have to select the AF7 which will configure the U sort 1. So you will get it go to the ordinate function registers low and high. So I will set the value AF7 means I have to set 1, 2, 4. What is the 1, 2, 4 is 4, 6, 7. So I am going to send the 7, going to left shift the 7th value to the 4th bit. Then it will automatically set the logic 1 in the 6th bit, 5th bit, and 4th bit and logic 0 in the 7th bit. And when it comes to the user, when it comes to the user one means, I have to set it in the what is the pin we have saw? We have saw as ninth pin. So I have to set it in the AF7. So I am also all again I am going to set the 7 to the left shift the 7 to the fourth thing, fourth pin. Then it will activate the user one. So this is how we will configure the ordinate functions. Okay. So, so this is a, so we will enable the clock, we will select the pin, we will select the function and we will set the reset the pin. So guys, today we have seen the RCC control registers and we have get it into a GPA registers. In tomorrow class, we will develop the code for these both things using the registers and we will get into a blinking LED program using the board. And next we are going to see the timers and you what we are going to see the coming settings. Okay. So I think I said this already time. So if you have any doubts, I'm uh, I'm sending the links in the WhatsApp for uh, IDs and uh, this PPTs and uh, referral manual in the WhatsApp group. So, okay guys, is this today class is clear? If you have any doubts means uh, tomorrow you can ask me because today it is already time. So tomorrow you can ask me your doubts. Okay. Okay, thank you guys. Oh, okay.